go out the country for a vacation. Pockets hurt, you guys. <laughs> 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 Damn, you, they haven't done enough for your career. They okay. haven't done nothing. Yeah. They've done nothing. Seriously. Damn it, Warriors. Go, go, Steph. I need more than a gold medal. Still, you right, big Stu. fan. Love Thanks, you guys' work. Thanks for coming on. I love you guys, and uh, I can't wait to go to my next uh, dead show and talk morning road. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the key. If you both agree you are better together than you are apart, Stay together, guys. That's the key to 20 years. Stay together. That is the key. Good stuff, Steve. Al Green, baby. Al Green. Let's stay together. (laughs) River Islands. As we talk dead. (laughs) Grateful dead. Uh, Talking more to Ross. Yeah, I'm on all these drinks or whatnot. Oh, that was funny. Stu got a funny guy, man. That show really is blown up. Um, Damn, how's Poppy doing, by the way? I wanted to get that in. I wonder how Poppy's doing. Oh, he's doing, doing well. He's you doing know, well. He's, has in, he's, uh, he's in, like, retirement mode. Yeah. You know? He's in retirement mode, so essentially. He's not even doing it. You know, my dad, happy my dad fancied himself the Poppy of our show. Of course. I, come on. You know? I, I can't listen, find the Tom. Listen, I knew exactly what was going on when Papa said and started <laughs> calling. And, and somebody, when I looked at YouTube, I was like, oh, Papa shassi has got his own photo on YouTube. It was, I knew exactly what was going hey, on. Yeah, I was especially Bobani sitting on the side, <laughs> and there was Papa Shasky and Shasky. Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Yeah, it's <laughs> the best. It's the best. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that is a little, that is funny. Stu Gatz is the best, though. He, he is really funny, is man. Best. He is funny. Uh, but it is funny because, like, this is why, look, I know a lot of people, look. You bring up the name Brock Purdy, and people have feelings all over. You're disrespecting him, and you're this it. I think the majority of Niner fans think he's really good. I think the majority of Niner fans, in fact, I almost say unanimously, Niner fans think he's better than Jimmy Garoppolo, okay? Is he the best quarterback in the entire league? I don't think anyone thinks that. I think they think he's really, really high level. But I find it fascinating how everyone around the country who's not a Niner fan looks at Brock Purdy, and they think that he is just a figment of the Shanahan offense. Not that he's not decent, but that like he would be literally nothing if he didn't play with these players around him and in this particular offense. I think that's harsh. I I do. I think that's really harsh. Like, and, and, And I'll take it a step further. I'm surprised how many people think that you could put Danny Dimes, a.k.a., uh, right. Daniel Jones, in this same offense and get comparable production. Yeah, who said I don't that on the show? No, I think said, people Somebody think that. did say that, I though, on the show. I think people think that. No, somebody on the show said that. I, I forget. Well, it was the Eagle guy who came on Shore said, Parks, right? Oh, Amy Shore Parks, you know, that dummy. Guy. Yeah, that dummy. And, um, and it's like, wait, hey, hold on. Like, <laughs> the year that he went to the playoffs, I believe he threw 15 touchdowns, Danny Dimes, and whatever. He ran for, like, 800 yards that year. He's not a oh, good player. Oh, that's who it was. It was Spike Eskin. Okay, well, he's Spike. not a good player. Like, what, another idiot. Uh, would Jalen Hurts look different in the Shanahan offense? Sure. I don't know what it would look like, but I think he'd look different. Just like Brock would look different in a variety of spots. I'll say this, though. Even if I threw Brock on to the Carolina Panthers, I think he'd look better than Bryce Young right now. I think he's – he's. Ooh. but again, right. but that's a but, non-winning situation. But, but here, here, here's, here's what I'll though. say. Here's what I'll say. About the whole playmaker aspect of everything. Oh, he's playmakers. He's playmakers. Everyone that, does. That would, that would get so. Joe Burrow yesterday was without T. Higgins. They don't have Joe Mixon. They don't have Boyd in the slot. They've lost a lot of playmakers on that offense. How did Burrow look yesterday? He was checked out Charlie. He threw for like 150 yards. Yeah, he was checked out Charlie. Yeah. So, yeah, you need playmakers. There's no knock on that. But how can you elevate your playmakers? Jimmy Garoppolo didn't have three different guys or four different guys with a thousand scrimmage yards. You know what I'm saying? No. Like Brandon Ayuk wasn't a thousand yard receiver with Jimmy Garoppolo. Debo Samuel had to run the ball to be effective with Jimmy Garoppolo. He was more effective as a runner than a receiver with Jimmy, basically. So how can you elevate your playmakers? When you get a quarterback who can elevate. So what did Houston do? They had playmakers last year. They added more. Yeah. They added more. What did they do with Mahomes? They add more. Of course you need playmakers in today's day and age. How can you elevate these playmakers? That's the difference between the good and great quarterbacks. And Brock Purdy's been really, really good because he's helped elevate these playmakers while they've elevated his play. So when I watch Jalen Hurts, right, and I'm, I'm picking him out in particular, there are times where I'm like, dude, I don't think he understands coverages and sees the field that well, right? Like, I, do, I think he's really smart. I think he's a really smart guy. But there's a difference between... 
understanding post snap in the pocket, what you're looking at and where guys are going to go right. and all that. And and that's a whole nother level of sophistication, right? A whole nother level of sophistication. There were times yesterday. I'm like, I don't think Herbert's seen it. Now there are one-off games where Purdy hasn't seen it, right? It just the Cincinnati game comes to mind. He, he just, he didn't look, he didn't look right all game, right? In that one, those are few and far between. I think Purdy would look pretty good. Not, amazing like he does, but I think he looked pretty good in almost every single system because at the base of what makes him really good is he understands coverages pre and post snap and he understands what routes people want to run and I think he's a rhythmic timing thrower who understands how to dice up zone defense. I, I, and I think that, that that carries into a lot of offenses. No, a it lot does. of offenses. It does. Now, I don't know how good Purdy would be in Carolina. I don't know how no, good he'd be in New York too. City. I, I want to make you that know clear. I think like, they would lose. because you, you need personnel in today's yeah. day and age. You need, but, but, Bryce but a quarterback. Un- but we see quarterbacks with playmakers. Like Zach Wilson, for example. The Jets were highly. They, everybody's picking the Jets to do something last year. Zach Wilson basically crapped the bed on himself. And that offense could not function. No. They could not function at all. Derek Carr, we see that times with the Saints, cannot function. So give Brock Purdy a little respect here, folks, if you're not giving him the proper respect. Brock Purdy's a really good quarterback. He's in the top eight when it comes to quarter. And, uh, there's, hey, we need to draft eight quarterbacks. We need to draft quarterbacks here. You take one, everybody take Mahomes, two, probably take a Josh Allen. Brock Purdy's one of the first eight quarterbacks selected if you're doing an all-quarterback draft. It, let's say I were to like take Mahomes off and put Purdy for Andy Reid. I think Andy Reid and Purdy would be unbelievable together. It'd be good. It'd be you really know what good. I mean? Like, unbelievable together. But the point that I'm going at, though, is I think the whole country is sitting here ready to critique the ever-living you-know-what out of Brock Purdy yeah. at every turn. At every single well, turn. And if you don't up. think that that's going to happen, watch it tonight. And I hope he just comes out gunslinging, slicing them up. It is his contract year. There's no doubt about that. Jay York said last offseason he will reset the quarterback market. And Dak just became the first $60 million man in the league. All that guaranteed money would Dak it. 209 guaranteed money or something, 209 million. But here's the thing with Dak. I think he's a good player. Not a great, like, uh, I think he's a good player. You're going to go 11 wins minimum and make the playoffs. Now, where he really falters is in the playoffs. But he's a good player. I think, like, oh, oh, Kirk Cousins. I'm taking Dak over Kirk all day. Boy, Kirk Cousins. Oof. Oof. We want to talk about a bad contract. You like that? You like that? Uh, Vernucci, Duke, we'll get to you on the other other side. We got Shasky's five plays he needs to see today. Five plays he needs to see today. Um, 888-957-9570. What's your X factor for tonight? Mine is the defensive line. Where's that defensive line going to be? Are they going to be able to slow down a run? Are they going to be able to get after Aaron Rodgers? 888-957-9570 is the number. Your X factors for tonight. As football's finally back in the Bay Area, Niners and Jets, Monday Night Football, highly anticipated season opener. Feel like we've been talking about it for weeks now. Well, it's finally here, and we're all over it. More details about the Hilton on the other side. That'll be brought to you by Safeway. Head to Safeway this week for these digital deals. Sweet corn, 27 cents each.